How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I appreciate you stopping by. And if it is your first time here and you're wanting to learn about the technical side of streaming, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel as I cover a lot of different things. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the navigation of the OBS studio. And a lot of the things that you may already know about Streamlabs OBS can also carry over to OBS Studio. But some things I want to let you guys know real quick before we get started is that the OBS Studio is more of a manual entry in terms of bringing things in. There's no built-in widgets like you have with Streamlabs OBS. So you're going to be doing a lot of browser sources to bring things into work with OBS uh, or at least for OBS Studio. The other thing, too, is OBS Studio is less taxing on your computer, so it's not going to be a giant resource hog. It doesn't have that bloatware that you get with the Streamlabs OBS. So with that already out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the navigation for the OBS Studio. So on the very top row here, you're going to have a bunch of menu options. So under File, you have your show recordings, and this is where you'll be able to go to the folder that you have all your recordings sent to if you do any type of recordings here using your Streamlabs, well not Streamlabs, using your OBS Studio. Um, now, if you use a certain format other than MP4 whenever you're recording, then you're going to want to use the Remux recording. The Remux recording is going to then allow you to take that certain file and then convert it into an mp4. For your settings, this is just another way to get into your settings. The showing settings folder and profile folder, this is more of uh, stuff for you to back, like be able to go to like the folder that's on your computer. Nothing, nothing really necessarily needing to go there unless you need to send that file or information over to the team over at OBS and stuff like that for them to look into. And then, of course, always on the top, not important, and then exit closes the program. Inside of edit, you have your basic types of editing functions like copy and paste. You can copy and paste filters. You can do transform. You can change order and stuff like that. So there's there's not a really a whole lot here. It's just another way of getting to certain things. But if you need to manually always go here, you can always find it. Uh, but once you start adding in sources and everything like that to your scenes, then you'll be able to start doing stuff like pastes and everything like that. Inside of view, you can do a complete full screen of the interface if you want to. So it will be something like this if you don't want to have that up on top. And then if you wanted to bring it out like this, you can have something like this. Uh, now for like docs and everything. So your docs is everything that's down here at the bottom. They consider that to be docs. So... If I was to go in here and reset the UI, you're going to see that now it had reset everything. So things just moved. So what I had it originally just a second ago was not what it would originally look like. Now, if I wanted to lock the UI, I could do that. You can also do custom browser docs. If you wanted to get rid of something or bring something back, if it has a check mark, that means it's going to be shown on the docs at the bottom there. If I get rid of it, it's going to get rid of it down here. So if you ever accidentally delete something, like let's say you click and drag this out because these are all module and you can move them around. But let's say you click that out and then for some reason it just like disappears. You know, then if you need to, then you can go ahead and just go to view, go to your docs and then bring it back in. So this one's sources, let's say it's gone. So we go back, view, docs, and then bring it back in, and it's right there. And then you can just kind of snap it in. You can see that it gives a little box of where it will go. And then if you just, like I said, if you wanna bring everything back to how it was, reset UI, and now everything's back. So pretty handy stuff. For your toolbar, you can list boxes, or you can get rid of it. Anything with a check mark means it's gonna be there. And then you have your sources icon, status bar, you know, all, the, all these things are pretty much right there in front of you. So like your sources icon, you can get rid of that. Status bar, you can get rid of that if you want to. Or you can bring it back. So that's all going to be this stuff down here, by the way, if you're, if you're not sure where this stuff is. So if you see down here at the bottom right corner, when I click on status bar, that shows up. Source bar. And then for your stats, you can pop this window up here and it will show you everything that you're doing. You know, seeing if you have any, any frame drops, how much space you have with your CPU, or it's not an CPU, but like how much you're using of your CPU, your disk space, the FPS that you have it set to and everything like that, your bit rate and so on and so forth. 
And then for monitor view, so you can see that I have three different types of monitors here. Uh, this will basically allow you to do stuff like this. So all your scenes and everything, you'll, you can have this all on one if you wanted to. And what you can do is you can kind of click around to the other scenes and stuff like that if you needed to. So it's pretty, pretty handy. And then you can hit escape to get rid of it and then just go right back. Um, now, if you have yourself for multi view window, you can do the same thing. It just brings up a smaller window of everything like that. And you can just kind of like click around and it moves it around. So if you want to put this onto like a different screen, you could do that and everything like that. So it's pretty, pretty handy. Now, if you go over to profiles, you can create a new profile if you're going to be having like multiple people doing stuff. Um, personally, I don't really see a need for multiple profiles. My thing is, is more about scene collections. So I've created these two on my own. Normally it will say un, um, untitled. But for me, I go I just created two different ones because I would stream wherever. But this is really where you want to pay attention. So what scene collections all of these down here are scenes. So if you stream on multiple platforms on different days, what you can do is create one for whichever platform you stream on one day and one for another. That way you don't have to go in there and hide different sources and delete sources and it just becomes a pain, right? So if you have different scene selections, what you can do is create a scene selection for Twitch and then create a different scene selection for say YouTube. And then that way, if you um, if you go to your YouTube, you'll be able to just click on that scene selection, it automatically changes everything, everything's already saved, and you're good to go. Now for your tools, there's a few things here. Um, I don't use everything here. The only thing I, I would recommend you guys using is just the auto configuration wizard. This will basically walk you through the steps to try to give you a good rough estimate on what good settings will be right out of the gate. So if you don't understand the advanced settings, you don't understand what bitrate is or if your computer can handle it and stuff like that, then just running it through and optimizing for streaming and recording as secondary or if you're wanting to do this for recording and maybe streaming secondary, you know, just follow the wizard and figure out where it puts you and then just kind of see how that works. Now, these other things I don't really mess with and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really know all too much about them. They're just there. I mean, I don't really mess with these guys. So I'm just being transparent with you on that. For this, this is all pretty self-explanatory stuff. You know, if they need any log files, you can pull that stuff, any crash reports, check for updates and everything like that. Now, the stream elements, this is not going to be there for you guys unless you install the obs.live. And when you have that, what will allow you to do is have your chat and also it has your activity feed. So you can see when people follow and people sub, host and everything like that. And you can see your chat right here. It is so sweet to have. So I definitely recommend you guys getting the OBS.live installed onto the OBS Studio. And that runs through Stream Elements. I use Stream Elements for everything now. I've converted away from Streamlabs and I don't look back. Um, but you'll be able to, you know, have all these extra things here just kind of mess with them if you need to you know you can edit the widget data you can back up your stuff you can see your media requests if you do any of that uh, you can also check for updates if there's anything there report any issues so it's really handy and if you go on multiple platforms and you want to use stream elements you can do that as well you just got to log out and then it's going to ask you to log into whatever you want to stream onto for me i use twitch that's where i stream so that's why i have it set for just that one but that's really nice to have so moving on down here into the docs, over here on the far right corner is your controls. So you'll have your start stream, start recording, your studio mode, studio mode. I have a video on basically it is the same function as it does over on the Streamlabs OBS. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Streamlabs OBS. I'm getting these two flipped around. <laughs> uh, but it basically does this. It splits it up. So everything over here on the preview side, because it says preview on the top. This is everything that you see. So if you like transition between different types of scenes and stuff like that, no one's going to see that until you hit transition or until you hit off the studio mode. So for 
for that, like if I'm on studio mode, I go over here, click on transition. It does the transition and then I turn off studio mode. And now we're here, right? So that's, that's how it is. It lets you make your quick little changes on certain things. That way people don't see what you're changing right away. And then in your settings, this is where you're going to find all of the configurations and I'll go over all this stuff in another video because it's just too much to throw into this one. But a lot of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory, especially if you've watched my video for Streamlabs OBS. Exit closes the program. You have different types of scene transitions. What you've been seeing every time I do this, this is a, um, it's called a stinger. And it's just a certain file that allows it to show something like that. They're really catchy, really cool to throw on there. Not needed but it's nice and flashy your audio mixer this is where it's going to show all of your audios for all of your devices that are attached right now on this scene it's just my microphone and the desktop audio i have them muted right now but you would see them moving right here and normally this will this will likely be going horizontal but if you want to change it you can if you just right click and go to vertical layout so you guys are getting a little bit of some advanced stuff right here out of the gate but if you want to change any of your stuff, just click on the little wheel here and you'll be able to see it right there. I right clicked on the top here and that's how I was able to get the same menu. But this is where you're going to find all of this stuff to be able to change your volume. You'll be able to mess with any type of off sync if you want to delay anything, if you want to try to monitor any of them to kind of see how they sound and to make sure you're not like blowing out people's eardrums You know, you can do that too. And over here is going to be all your sources. So everything from like your browser sources to your capture card, webcam or DSLR camera, whatever you guys are going to use, that's all going to get populated right here in the, in the sources. I do have videos about how to create a scene and everything like that. So if you watch those videos, that will also translate over here as well. A lot of the stuff with Streamlabs OBS will also translate over here as well because you have all of these things right here. So you're very familiar with like window capture, your video capturing text, being able to add in a media source or using like a slideshow, regular images, your game capture and so on and so forth. Like a lot of the stuff is very self-explanatory. Like I said, though, you're going to have to use browser source for your alerts and for any other type of widgets that you want to use. And that's where uh, you guys are going to have like a ton of these. Now, if you use stream elements, there's a workaround for this where you can put everything into one link, but you have to be using stream elements for the entire thing. And I'll get into that in much later videos. We're just going to cover, you know, small things at a time, but the, uh, but the OBS studio is what we're focusing on right now. So, and then over here is, of course, all your scenes, you know, create a scene, remove a scene, same thing, create a source, remove a source, and so on and so forth. Uh, I know there was a lot of stuff that I went over in this video, so definitely ask questions if you have any inside the comment section below. If I missed anything, you know, let me know and I will go ahead and try to, you know, make a comment or anything to kind of help you guys out. But um yeah, if you guys need any help or anything, you can always reach out to me in the comments on Twitter, Discord, or whenever I'm live over on Twitch. So make sure you guys follow me on all of those platforms. Links are in the video description below. I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.